All right, welcome to the Transmit Podcast. We're back at Tango Del Rey for our second show of the week. And today I have with me... Keith Hammond. And... Mason Zedeker. Okay, and um, I'm going to start with Keith. Uh, you're a bit of a newer addition, so um, mm-hmm. I don't know your story as well, and really for the audience and for me. Mm-hmm. Um, how'd you get your start with uh, Super Awesome Showdown? Well, actually, it's cool that I'm on the podcast with Mason because he's how I got into this. Oh, yeah. I uh, did a short film with him uh, about three years ago, and uh, he told me he was a pro wrestler, and I've been a, I've been a fan for just decades, and so I... Uh, said I would be interested, and he had a hype man, like a guy who walks him down the ring, he yeah. couldn't make it, and so uh, he asked me to start, and, and I have never left. That seems to be a way like a lot of people get involved with Super Awesome Showdown is, we'll say, hey, we need a guy to do a very simple thing, and somebody gets hooked. Or, you know, that or they see the show, and then they approach us afterwards. Yeah, it's very, it's very Princess Bride. It was very uh, uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. So he'd be like, hey, you know, come on, do a little bit of training. Okay, I guess you didn't kill anybody, Keith. I guess you can come back next week, so... So they you were pro- very patient with me. So were you like a program at, any, at all? You, what, you, oh, yeah. Yeah, did. so I was a program uh, several times. And, uh, and yeah, and then we did a Art Around Adams show after I'd been trained for about six months. Mm. And uh, I got to actually be a character there. And then you know, Ryan Odyssey was just a few months after that. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, listen, um, I'm going to ask you about a Ryan Odyssey in a minute. But first I want to see um, with Mason here. He's my uh, roommate and a uh, longtime buddy. Uh, How did you get your start with Super Awesome Showdown? Uh, I'm one of the uh, founders of the show. Um, so years and years and years before Super Awesome Showdown uh, even had a name, uh, me and Travis, uh, who was Magnus and uh, Cap- Captain Ultrafist, uh, kind of just kept pitching each other this show uh, at work. And um, one day, you know, and we knew uh, me, Travis, uh, Victor, Antonio, a lot of the guys who helped start the company, um, they all wrestled with us uh, in a promotion called SAW here in San Diego. So we were all kind of the SAW guys. So the original name for Super Awesome Showdown was actually Super Awesome World, so that we could keep the same SAW tag that we had used previously. Makes sense. But I remember we came together um, once. So SAW had kind of closed down maybe six months to a year later, we got everybody together in uh, a big backyard out in the middle of Lemon Grove, and we pitched everybody the show idea. Hey, we want to do a wrestling show, but it's all superheroes. Yeah. And we wanted to have it paired with a a non-live, like, skit-based, like, YouTube video show. And then you'd come see the live show, and the live show is supposed to be sort of like Disney on ice, but it was really, it's really Mickey Mouse, and, you know, so it's really Magnus, who you've seen in the videos online. You really see Magnus wrestling, it's the actual guy, you know, it's the real Kid Knight, the real Vic Valentine was sort of the original idea, but we ended up, um, you know, many years passed, uh, or probably about a year or more from that point passed before we had our first show. I think we made one video as Super Awesome World, but... Super Awesome Showdown became the uh, where where our bread and butter was was because we knew how to do live wrestling shows really really yeah. well. We weren't great at doing online video shows, so we just kept rolling. This was where yeah we had all of our uh, experience and what we were good at, so we just kind of kept rolling with the live show more than the the online. Yeah, okay, and listen, it it really shows like it feels like an online show in a lot of ways, just live. <clears throat> Or at least, you know, with the stories we do where we're on every match no matter, or every show, no matter how inconsequential it may be in the greater story, even if it's not Galacticadia, which we're doing this week and it's a big show, mm-hmm. we're always threatening Earth mm-hmm. or at least the greater San Diego area. Mm-hmm. So what I want to ask now is um, with, uh, with Keith here, um, where, how'd you get come up with uh, your character of Orion Odyssey? Well, I've been working with Super Awesome Showdown as... Uh, Ivan Sadistic, and he went through a couple different name things, but he was basically a a minion for Vlad Tempest, one of Mason's characters. Right. And uh, I knew I wanted to do, since he was a bad guy, I knew I wanted to do have a good guy character so I could just help out on the show as much as possible. So I, it just really kind of came out of the blue, kind of out of of this wanting to have like a a warrior character. I have always loved the Orion constellation, like most people. Yeah. Just always have loved that. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, you're pro wrestler, so you got to use alliteration. So mm-hmm. Orion Odyssey, uh, I couldn't find any characters named that. It was some old video game, but 
Um, yeah. No and one's so, coming after you for royalties on this. So I, yeah, it's definitely different than I never played the video game, but so different than that. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, you, Mason? Do you have a character that you like above anyone else? Not really. Um, you know, I think the 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 more interesting, or at least the more entertaining story, though, is um, Vlad Tempest. Um, he is a ton of fun. So well, but he came about. Um, as a kind of a throwaway character. We had, you know, when the show first started, we had five or six people who would do four matches, right? So people would be switching in and out of gimmicks. Oh, yeah. So, you know, six of us uh, playing eight characters across the, the length of a show, or more sometimes, if we had people in program outfits and all that kind of stuff. So we were, so that's kind of where that started. We had a show, and uh, a good guy, uh, which I believe was Ultra Fist, if I remember correctly, but I know it was, it might have been Jalapeno, but we had the whole show booked out, but we had one character, good guy character, who was off the card. At that point, we didn't have a bad guy, and we had like a week and a half before showtime. So I was just like, I can do... Uh, I was like, I can put something together. Like, I've got this really bad idea, but it'll, it'll be <laughs> good enough for one show. Um, just this space, this vampire from outer space. Um, you know, again, the simplest, the simplest, dumbest idea. I talk with a really bad Romanian accent. Um, I already had the costume fangs from a previous, like, vampire gimmick I did on the independent wrestling scene, like, years and years previous. So I bought a red jumpsuit. I bought a, a red jumpsuit. Uh, which was an, actually inspired by, uh, if you guys know, SoCal Crazy. He's an independent wrestler. When he started, he wrestled in a jumpsuit. And so that's, that's where my head went. Like, oh, I can have this full-body jumpsuit. Yeah, it's super utilitarian. You can uh, put, put stuff on it. And, it's, yeah, you don't feel bad. It's not like, oh, I have a leather jacket that I don't want to put a patch on. But, eh. no, I, and I really like the idea because not only is, you know, is it an interesting character and everyone can, I, can identify with a vampire, basically. Mm-hmm. We were all aware of that. But also, just you being the prince or king of space, Romania, means you can have Keith come he's, in. He's a count. Yeah, a count, sorry. Mm-hmm. And have Keith come in as one of your soldiers now. And it's, it's just one of those ideas that lends itself to you expanding and having your entourage and an army, because now you also have Chernobyl. Uh, used to. He used uh, to. exploded. Yeah, he did. Uh, he blew up on the last ep- episode. <laughs> um, yeah, that stuff's... Um, it's, yeah, it's crazy, because I think it, because it was the simplest idea, we need a bad guy... Here's this dumb, you know, literally a gimmick. Like, yeah. there wasn't a backstory. There wasn't anything else beyond that that we didn't just sort of, like, build on the fly. Um, and it just it kept growing and it kept growing. And it became, you know, one of the... Now he's one of the key, like, characters on the show. You know, mm-hmm. arguably the biggest, if not... One of the biggest, if not the biggest villain who comes out. Yeah, and I always like it because um, since we were roommates, I, I can always... I can always um, in my mind, no. Oh, a show. Oh, yeah, a show's coming up because your hair will change dramatically, and in a kind of a hipster way, but a little more extreme. Because you'll have to go red. You'll have chevrons in there, and you'll have like the top bit be long. Right now, you have like frosted tips, but red. Yeah, it, it look it looks phenomenal. Let me tell you. Nice. Just wait till you see the uh, new glasses I have. Oh, this is gonna be great. Listen, um, yeah, come on to Facebook. We're gonna have some footage up, and uh, you'll be able to see his new character in the near future. Uh, now. Let's go back to Keith for a second. Now, I've been sadistic. Now, did, did that come from anything? Did you brainstorm on that with, uh, with Mace, or how'd that come about? No, I, what happened is, is Mason needed a, needed a, a hype man, and uh, so I just I decided to go with... Uh, I'd, I'd not done any wrestling yet, so I always liked the character of uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah. He was a bad guy. He always had... Uh, it's, lack of a better term, he's a douchebag heel. <laughs> he's just like... People just hate him immediately. He was just cocky. And so, um, yeah, I just burst through the curtain, and the first thing I thought was to yell, Space Romania, and take my arms out, and immediately I had 150 people booing me. And I'm like, I'm never leaving this place. This is amazing. So it was, yes. uh, yeah, and so, and then just over time, we tried different face paint with them, and, uh, and yeah, he's, he's a great, I, I think he's a great foil for Vlad. I think he's, he's just, he can't do anything right. Yeah. He always... Um, He's always fumbling around. People love to watch him get beat up and, and watch Vlad get beat up. So it's just a, it's a fun character, and I like the, the comedy aspect is, is, is really fun. And, and 
so far, we've been able to keep them as villains, even though people really seem to love the characters. All right, now, before I move on to training, because I know um, Mason's mm -hmm. got a really cool story with training and how he got his wrestling training down in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, I did want to mention that uh, I did like how you made your character because, at first, you both had very a very similar costume. And I love the gimmick where you would just change masks. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, what I always love about all the officials, me included, and the, the announcers, is they're very easily foolable, or at mm -hmm. least one of them is. And that's all you really need. So um, how, how did you come up with that idea to, to switch back and forth? I mean, I'm sure it's been done before, but uh, did, was that a happy coincidence, or did you do some planning with that? Well, what happened is I got tired of getting face paint, because I was originally doing a ton of face paint. Mm. And so what I did is I looked online, and uh, I found this really cool red skull flame evil looking mask and then I don't remember who the character was against but we decided it would be funny if uh, since I had a mask suddenly that makes it open that you could have villain effect um, have a villain effect of switching the mask and make people upset and then the I way remember we that would, popped like a really well oh yeah and then we, the way we did it was very comedic where there was like three of us or four of us all putting on the Ivan mask yeah. and so it just it was uh it was hilarious. So I think uh, Killer Bees is the first one I can think of that had the mask and going back and forth, but I'm sure it's something that... Uh, yeah, well, the, the basic idea, it's something that I think it's now called twin magic, right? So yeah. if you have two normally twin wrestlers or people who are tag teams or whatever who wear the same gear... Um, so it's kind of a cla it's kind of a little bit of a twist, you know. I think our twist is the fact that we had to take like take the mask off and pass right. it back and forth between us. Um, I think even on there was you know we kept escalating it too because I think there was a show where it was like the guy without the mask was the legal wrestler or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a uh, yeah. I mean it's a cl it's a classic gag and we just kind of put you know because we were dressed identically at the time we used to both wear these the big red jumpsuits. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just something where it's like, oh, you've got a mask. You know, I think it might have been even decided like the day of the show or soon, soon after we saw the mask where it was like, you've got the mask, though we can do a whole gimmick with that. We can do a whole oh, yeah. you know, thing. Um, and that was, yeah, that was a super good time. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to what I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, you got your training in Mexico and you said that you had to like do, do, do really commit and go to a commute to get to uh, your, it was more of a traditional like Lucha style wrestling training program. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I came in. I, I like to say I came in through the uh, the like back door of the bathroom of me of wrestling. Uh, the first place that I started training at was a real kind of like fly by night, like kind of rip off artist kind of place. Um, the, the person who ran it, you know, wasn't wasn't really qualified and had a really bad reputation. I didn't know any of this because I was, you know, brand new walking into the the door of the wrestling business. So, but that ended up, yeah, being a really, you know, pretty pretty awful place until. Um, but luckily enough, I be because the the wrestling business is really like insular and kind of everybody everybody hears what's going on, everybody knows what's going on. Some other wrestlers came down to that school, uh, including some guys who did lucha training. Um, and they, you know, you know, hope, I guess saw, you know, some potential, or maybe just the fact that I really wanted to to do it, you know, like I was, I was can there see all that. the time, you know, I was doing everything I was told. And when it kind of came out that, you know, this that school that I was at was, you know, kind of a sham, they invited me down to Mexico to train with uh, the his gimmick name is Phobia. Um, so and he was a pretty pretty popular luchador in uh, northern Mexico. You know he he trained guys like Conan. Um, I saw Rey Mysterio Jr. and Centurion and uh, Silver King and a lot of those guys would come through or come around the school. And that was in yeah, Tijuana. And that's you know I'd say I went there and I got you know pretty solid lucha training. And then we came up uh, eventually to work with uh, Mike Rapata, who's actually debuting on Galacticadia tonight uh, as the Colorado Kid. Yeah. Uh, he was a NWA world champion, and I would say, you know, I learned a lot of technique, um, you know, a lot of the high-flying stuff and the technical stuff uh, in Mexico, and then I would say Mike is the one who really got me polished to the point where I could, you know, make a little money, like it was a, a legit side hustle. Uh, learning with Mike and being able to do, you know, 
learn not just the the wrestling technique side of things, which is what I learned in Mexico, but the actual like business side of things and how to how to do kind of the business hustle side of pro wrestling. Yeah, and, and I think uh, in a lot of ways that shows that you know because uh, some other uh, productions they they kind of have that, but they don't seem to have like the attention to detail. They don't have like all the technology we do. They haven't like the, the level of showmanship that we do. Yeah, and there's um you know there's a trick in the pro wrestling world. There's a lot of slang, right? Like, yeah. You know, the biggest, the, one of the earliest lessons I learned from Mike that I didn't really learn from anybody else is what selling actually means. Hmm. And selling, you think, oh, you're selling the move, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. It was like, oh, making, the, making people buy the move that I just took. Yeah. No, I'm selling T-shirts when you're selling a move. That was one of the things that he was like, no, you're selling your gimmicks at the table, and that's what you're selling in the ring. Right. So if you're a good guy or bad guy, like... Your goal with that sell job is to move T-shirts, not just make people believe what's happening. Or right. So you want people to empathize with you, and you want people to kind, you know, know who you are and get behind you, and all the all the stuff that uh, uh, leads to, you know, in the end of the day, a successful a, wrestling show. A successful wrestling show, but also, you know, forty dollars in your cash box or sixty dollars in your cash box from T-shirt sales. Well, look, guys. It looks like uh, we have to get ready for the show now, and I want to thank both of you for coming on. And um, actually, you mentioned Travis before we go. Uh, I want to mention that um, he is a former wrestler, but he's still a friend of the show. He's still our roommate, in, as far as I'm concerned. He's had some medical issues, and um, we have um, – has his Patreon been set up for his medical issues? So I believe the Patreon has just launched. Uh, we'll make sure you've got the link or whatever to put yeah, it in Yeah, we'll put it in notes. the description. Look in the description. And um, if you're a fan of wrestling and like we are, or of just people who deserve some help, uh, he had some medical issues and with his heart and with his brain. And um, we w- really want to support him. We have some shirts tonight that are going on sale. And uh, I know you're not going to be here, listeners, to buy them. But uh, know that we're going to do everything we can to help him out. Uh, that's Travis Heffernan. He's uh, Magnus and Captain Ultra Fist, or he used to be. And um, look for that in the description, all right? So I want to thank everyone for tuning into the Transmit podcast. And uh, I want to thank our, my two guests today. Uh, Keith Hammond. A little into the microphone. Sorry, Keith Hammond. Thank you very much. And Mason Zedeker. I'm Spike. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye.